my best friend Nara and I headed down to the Arctic Hill. It was covered in ice, which made it very fun to slide down, and it was a perfect ocean day for it. Nara slid down and did a trick with her tail. I slid and spun around three times before I reached the bottom. Some very young narbles were watching us slide and cheered us on. They wanted to slide down too, but it looked a little too dangerous. That's when I came up with the perfect solution. I called over my friends, the Fipplefosh, and asked if they would help. They were happy to do what they could. They stayed at the bottom of the hill and when the young narbles slid down, they flew right into the soft and puffy Fipplefosh, bouncing right off. Everyone had fun even the Fipplefosh. The slimy Dundledum Cafe has the best food in the whole ocean. The cook, Chef Dundledon, makes my favorite meal in whole world, the Mondabondo Burger. One day I visited the cafe to order a Mondabondo Burger, or two, and I saw that it was closed. What happened? I asked Chef Dundledon. He said, we've been overrun by sea bugs, and we can't open up until they're gone. Sea bugs. I said, those little critters are always digging up my plants and eating them. I made a trail of plants all the way to the salty bubble holes. As the sea bugs woke up they ate my plants and followed the trail. When they reached the holes, the bubbles shot them up high into the ocean and they floated away. I remembered that sea bugs only eat my plants at night, since they sleep during the day. So I came up with a plan. I tiptailed inside the cafe and started placing plants from my garden on the ground. I lost a few plants, but it worth it to eat my delicious Monda burger. On a beautiful day, I went to the Coral Jungle Gym to play. It was at the center of my favorite park. It had big fake fishing hooks to swing on, swimming tubes, and even an obstacle course made out of coral. It was very crowded with other narbles. When we started, I swam behind a big tire so that I didn't get hit. I jumped on a swing and swung over lots of the other fish. After a while, more and more fish were out, until it was only me and one other narble. It was my best friend Nara. I decided that it was the perfect time for a great big water fight. We divided up into two teams and went to opposite sides of the park. If you spit water and hit another fish, they were out. The last fish standing would win. She swam inside the swimming tubes and I followed after. They zigged and zagged and went this way and that. Just as I swam out the other end, I got hit with water. Nara had waited for me to come out, and she had won the water fight. I was happy for her, but next time I would be ready. I saw a sign that said Swimming Gungaloos, with an arrow pointing to a hut and I decided to look inside. The Gungaloos were all inside the hut, and they were looking around for something. Their coggers, or tails, were spinning around. Which happens when they are nervous. What are you looking for? I asked. Gunga, the youngest Gungaloo is hiding and we can't find him. He loves to play hide and seek, but this time he's hid too well, said the oldest Gungaloo. Maybe I can help, I said. Where are some of his favorite places to hide? Well he hid in the cabinet for a long time once. When he came out he had crumbs all over his face, said a Gungaloo. And that one time he hid in the picnic basket. All the food was gone when we finally opened it, said another I said and what's that delicious smell? I just baked some kraken cakes. They're inside the jar over there, said a very pretty gungaloo. I swam over to the jar and opened it up. Sure enough, Gunga was inside, munching on his tenth kraken cake. They thanked me very much for finding him and asked how they could repay me. A delicious kraken cake was more than enough thanks.